Because the big question that I'm raising, is the Jet Etihad deal then in the national interest or is it not in the national interest? That's the big question that we're raising tonight. Joining me now on my panel, and we'll raise all the big questions in a moment as to why this deal is being seen by some against the national interest, but by many that it is for the national interest. Subramaniam Swami of the Janta Party is the man who raised this uh, initial objection against this deal. TSR Subramaniam, former cabinet secretary, is with us. Kapil Kaul, CEO of South Asia of Kappa, who looks closely at the aviation sector. Karma Paljor, who tracks it closely, is also with us. Captain Gopinath, former MD, Air Deccan and entrepreneur, is with us. And Sanjay Jha, spokesperson of the Congress, is also joining us. Appreciate all of you joining us. But I'm going to, as I place all those big questions, and they'll come on your screen one by one, on, your, uh, on the lower side of your screen. Dr. Subramaniam Swami, Today, the Prime Minister in his letter has made it very clear that this deal has not even been cleared. It's still going through the regulatory process. Yet, you went and jumped the gun. On May 29th, you made an accusation against the government that there were national security concerns being violated, that there was an alleged whiff of corruption, and you have gone for the government. Now, even before the deal is finally goes through the regulatory mechanism, you have raised the bogey of corruption. Are yes. you, in a sense, targeting, some would say, dare I say, blackmailing this government? <laughs> well, you are intimidating the government. Well, it is the duty of the opposition to bring these things to public record. Had I not written that letter, the, uh, on June 11th, yes. the FIBPB would have cleared the uh, project. The Prime Minister says that he has been raising this issue on the 22nd of, uh, from the 22nd we, we, of April. We, we, he we, did not even go to Abu we, Dhabi we, for a bilateral visit. We, yes, of course you are not. I have never held the Prime Minister responsible. It is you in the media who are talking about his U-turn and all that. I certainly think that he has done what he could do within the, within the, uh, uh, the constraints that have been placed on him. I only say this. Today we have a parliamentary committee which says it's not in the national interest. We have the uh, operators in this uh, yes. in a, uh, uh, who are looking after passenger interests. They are saying it's not in the interest. Air India says it's not in our interest. Such a large spectrum of people are saying that it is not in our interest. Then the Prime Minister draws the attention of Mr. Ajit Singh to a intelligence uh, uh, prepared joint intelligence committee prepared report on the impact of Middle Eastern airlines on Indian airlines and national security. Now, national security issues are not raised by me alone. It's been raised on a document which has been brought to the attention of uh, Mr. Ajit Singh. Mr. Right. Ajit Singh is asked to convene, a, a prepare a cabinet note so the cabinet meeting can be called. He is given a reminder and still the cabinet meeting has not taken place. So, you are you're effectively saying that there was an attempt by ministers in this government to push through this deal in haste. That's your charge. That I, despite, I, I will, despite the Prime Minister... I will say that Mr. Ajit Singh had a joint secretary on 22nd in Abu Dhabi waiting to sign. The, 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 the nigger in the wood pile was the uh, inter-ministerial group which opposed this deal. And that's where the problem arose and that's why he went to the Prime Minister. But, let, no, but let, me, let me also tell you, let me quote from your own letter. You say my usually reliable sources, usually reliable sources tell me that is, if this deal is finally cleared and implemented, it would destroy the Indian airline industry, especially Air India, and empower a foreign airline and a nation known for money laundering will become a hub for India's passenger traffic. That's right. Now, Surely all these issues, as the Prime Minister's letter says, are being debated in a regulator. Well, it's a question of debating. They, 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 are in a, they are before the FIPB. Some of these issues are FIPB before SEBI. You are, you are prejudging FIPB the entire issue. FIPB cleared Air, Air Asia because there was no opposition at that time. Because of my letter, the FIPB could not clear it. No, That's I, why it got no, delayed. It seems to be suggesting as if Subramaniam Swami is, is the only one in this country that the regulators don't matter. Only you know what is right for India and what is not right for India. Well, I can you, always say what is right when I have proved it by going to court on the 2G spectrum matter and so many other matters. I can tell you today this deal is much worse than any other deal we have signed so far. Okay. You know, we will come to the specifics in a moment, but Sanjay Jha, respond to what you are hearing from uh, uh, Dr. Swami, because the Prime Minister responds today in his letter by saying the allegations are factually incorrect and baseless. But he hasn't answered really some of the core issues that the deal is fraught with national security concerns that by providing a vastly enhanced seat capacity to Etihad just before the deal was inked through a bilateral service agreement, Etihad has been provided a sweetener. Now these are the concerns which have been raised not just by Dr. Swami but by several others as well, MPs as well as committees. 
don't you think that the prime minister needs to answer these one by one rather than passing them up to the regulator saying these matters are being discussed in other fora uh, you know rajdeep first and foremost the press release issued by the pmo today addresses all the issues that have you know i, I don't know how become uh, Uh, an issue of intense speculation in the media for the last couple of days in particular now but, but let, let let's address the facts number 1 i mean there are two aspects to the entire deal that we are talking about the first is the equity investment made by etihad airways into jet yes. now, as we all know that uh, and your own graphics were pointing out very correctly that when you have fdi in 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 aviation sector it was much needed uh, given the state of the domestic aviation industry yes. uh, the partner gains i mean in terms of new markets you get capital you get expertise you get more passengers yes. so it makes a lot of business rational sense now as far as you know whether the control and the ownership issue is there a way by which etihad may be having a bigger say in the management etc is concerned as you rightly pointed out those issues are currently being looked at by sebi fipb and a couple of other uh, you know kind of agencies so Swami, Swami, Dr. So Swami is saying. Aside. Dr. Swami seems to suggest that none of these bodies would have looked at these issues had he not red flagged them. Well, let me tell you, uh, everyone is entitled to their own levels of arrogance. I don't want to comment on that. That's his personal <laughs> insight, and, and God bless him. <laughs> but, but coming down to the point of the second point of the hub issue, let, let me tell you, there's a, there's something that Ajit Singh has been repeatedly pointing out. Yes. And, and that's the truth. That end of day, you know, this talk about the coincidence of the deal happening within within a day of of, of the uh, equity deal being announced. Yes. Now. why would if if it's so easy for even a kindergarten person to say hey is there a correlation uh, frankly speaking the government could have said well do it 10 days or 2 weeks or 3 weeks later i think let's not get into the cosmetics of the argument it's the not truth a is yes. i have been hearing i had no i actually have been hearing dr swami say that on a panel discussion with me yesterday yes. the truth is india cannot create abu dhabi as a hub rajdeep uh, a hub is created when there are hundreds of bilaterals india giving any preferential status to abu dhabi does make in an international hub a singapore or a dubai or a hong kong yes. haven't happened because of our counter party yes. arrangements how okay. happened when you have great infrastructure so you have a great tourist story you have a so you're you're sector. saying so nothing stops dubai or mumbai from getting a big hub anyway okay. so you're it's about understanding the global flow of increased international traffic I'll come and taking a pragmatic discussion i i'll come to my aviation experts in a moment because they are important to this debate but mr subramaniam first on the bureaucratic point what i might to understand today when the prime minister or the pmo in his note says yes the deal is being reviewed it is going through various regulatory authorities we will bring it into the cabinet level this after the group of ministers headed by mr chidambaram and three senior ministers went through the deal gave it an uh, its approval now today in the month of july after the approval by the gom suddenly the prime minister saying we will take it to the cabinet is this prime minister simply playing safe to avoid a 2g like situation emerging or is this prime minister simply indecisive and worried about the fallout of a deal like this is it indecision Prasdeep, or is it running scared of a 2g like issue Prasdeep, there are a very large number of issues in different dimensions so we are trying to compress them in a 5 10 minute kind of a de- debate let me make only two points here one is the substance of the deal yes there are two three very important issues coming up there that i it appears that we have shot first and then we take aim we have done the deal after that we are discussing it here what the contours of the deal are etc what is the implication on other airlines what is the implication on airline industry etc etc having done that we use here bilateral for our fdi policy without seeing the implication of what it means to the entire sector has this fdi killed all fdi in our airline industry is a question so there are, there are all kinds of questions there but let me come back to the let other experts talk about it i don't want to pass a judgment on this that i have two concerns here there is an interministerial group yes however much you downgrade them you put them under sweep them under the carpet they have got a point to make what are those points has anyone looked at them That's i looked at what you call very nobly the group of ministers it's not a group of ministers it's a sheet of paper a group of ministers is something which is formally constituted by government or by cabinet committees this is just a sheet of paper and any ma- what is the point in having a group of ministers the prime minister exactly. tells mr chidambaram to go through the deal you are making mr. my point you are making my point under the rules of business any group of ministers yes these the minutes have to be prepared by a permanent official of the government yes. uh, by, by, by permanent official now leave that aside 
that group of ministers gives four findings. Yes. It does not rebut any of the, it does not even refer to the arguments made. In fact, the chairman of the group of ministers, their own ministry has objections in this particular area. My question here is that how cavalier can we be in taking decisions here? Government has a right to take decisions provided they look at all aspects, I, I, but I, they have no right to take decisions first and then have it examined later. That's an interesting they, point that you have taken the decision and now, now we are going and lastly, yes. the public would like to know are the objections of the interministerial group valid or not? Are they substantive or not? Le, I, are they, can, I, can I for a moment take those they? objections to our aviation experts? One, one, no, one yes. correction. Yes, the Prime Minister did not ask Mr. Chidambaram to evaluate the deal. He asked him to find out whether, as Mr. Ch uh, Ajit Singh requested, whether the recommendation of the interministerial group can be over uh, overruled. But, but it can, you know, effectively, Mr. Chidambaram did. That did is he may have exceeded his brief. That's that's your view, Mr. Swami, that he, you believe that he exceeded his brief. I'm, I'll come to that in a moment. But Kapil call as an aviation expert. Let's get it clear: Is this deal in India's interest or not? There is one feeling that India needs more foreign direct investment, including in the aviation sector. On the other hand, an additional 36,670 seats per week suddenly being given to an airline like Etihad even just before the deal is in will lead to the uh, suspicion that the only one really gaining is Etihad and Abu Dhabi. Where does the truth lie? Does this deal benefit India or not? And Indian civil aviation or not? Two things. First thing you raised about FDI. FDI yes. for aviation was important. Yes. Uh, it was important policy correction which we didn't do for 20 years. Yes. There's a separate debate. Why didn't we allow air foreign airlines to invest in India for 20 years? That's a separate debate. But we strongly welcome FDI. But you need to have FDI in an equitable framework, in a transparent framework. So that every, in the entire industry and the national competitiveness of the sector is, is enhanced. Unfortunately, through this deal, no matter what people say, yes. that a bilateral is different, valuation is different, equity yes. sale is different, valuation is fundamental to this deal. And I'll tell you two, two reasons for it. Etihad is not interested in making Jadevis profitable. Etihad is interested in supporting their long-haul network, which they are expanding very rapidly, and they want to build an Abu Dhabi hub. That is the rationale for their entire investment. So to that extent, the it biggest beneficiaries are Etihad and Abu Dhabi, not India, and not Jet Airways, and not no, India's, I mean, India's civil aviation no, so industry. Abu Dhabi for them is a game-changing deal. So, they it, so it's a game-changer for Etihad. Yes, but even for Jet, if you look at it, yes. they were struggling to raise money for three, four years. Certainly, this deal not only gives them 379 million, yes. it's a 900 million package. Yes, and that bilaterals are central to it. If that would not have happened, the deal would not have happened. Because you got that 900 million because of the bilaterals, right. it places Jet Airways in a competitively stronger position. Point taken. But which, you know, would it be, which it would not have uh, had but, this bilateral not been. But, but the question is, Karma, have India's interests really been compromised or are the interests of a few competing right. airlines and airports in India whose interests are in danger? Let's be clear. Is it the GVK, the GMR, the Indigos who have more to worry about than really, as Dr. Swami is trying to suggest somewhere, that there is you know, uh, some foreign agency which is behind it or a country which is involved in but is internal competition also partly responsible here? Certainly so, uh, Rajdeep. If you look at our own carriers, they have much to worry about because we are talking about the global network, global muscle of an Itihad who's got presence in so many countries, 80 destinations. But that aside, just wanted to put one question to uh, Dr. Swami. Sir, the FDI in aviation was cleared. Uh, you know, for allowing foreign uh, airlines to invest in India. Wasn't that the time for you to raise these concerns? No. Emirates flies from Dubai, fly Dubai, flies from Dubai. They have, sir, 54,000 seats they are operating out of India. Why didn't you highlight these issues? Why didn't you talk about Air India? Why didn't you talk about Indigo at the time when the government enhanced bilaterals for them? I mean, that was the time or the time when the government decided to allow FDI by foreign. That was the right time for a what person is, like What is so I specific was... about this deal, Dr. Swami, that has got you into a lather? That is the bottom line. If, for example, the hub was in Singapore or Bangkok, would you have got into a lather? Is it Abu Dhabi that is troubling you? Is it Etihad's uh, uh, alleged ownership and money, laund uh, money laundering charges you make against Gulf countries that trouble you? What is it that is troubling you about this deal? Well, first of all, I don't specialize in airline industry like you. So, therefore, 
I don't, I don't concentrate on every move in the airline industry. No, it's just a figure, uh, sir. No, no, but you know, hold on, hold on, Dr. Swami, I must intervene again. You today have again gone and written a letter now on Air Asia. Yes. Again, you are saying Air Asia's deal needs to be re examined. I will examine the entire, a, a, and the entire deal it's needs a, to be probed again. It's so a fraudulent it appears that you have suddenly found an interest and in the aviation there, sector. And there, because I didn't write in advance, it cleared the uh, FIPB. No, okay. so what Even is it? Why, it's totally why illegal. suddenly now? I am saying that I have seen a report. I have written a new letter to the Prime Minister, yes. pointing out to him the Joint Intelligence Committee report on, on the FDI effect on national security, which is, I am sorry I can't make it public because it is absolutely top secret, number one. Number two, the Prime Minister has referred to in his own uh, memo uh, that uh, Ajit Singh should look at the uh, impact of Middle Eastern Airlines on Indian uh, airline industry. Now that also has, uh, I have seen a big uh, write up on the national security. Mr. Uh, Yachuri's committee also mentions national security. But as, as, as Mr. Now, I, I am all coming. these issues should have been discussed, debated before you went in for an FDI policy. You have now have, gone in for I an have, FDI I have, policy. I have, FDI plus I, 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 I have come in when I have found others who wrote received no response. Yes. Many wrote before me. It's not that they came on much earlier and uh, I came in at a time when it appeared that this deal was going to go through and Mr. Chidambaram seemed to be hell-bent to clear it. No, that's uh, my worry. Is this again Dr. Swami versus Chidambaram? No, no, no. Is there no, something? Sorry, uh, because no. even in Air Asia today, you have indicated that it's, it's the Absolutely. who in some way There is no this corrupt deal in, in the country today which uh, Mr. Chidambaram doesn't have a hand. No, no, but the, the finance the, the, minister. Hold on. Hold Wait on, a minute. Hold on, Dr. Swami. Mr. Chidambaram is not on this program. You are making I a am, state. I am telling you. I am talking no, no, to you as finance minister. He is in every one of those deals. So, therefore, that's the issue. No, the government is the government's responsibility. It cannot be. Absolutely, it is government's responsibility. There, where do I challenge that? In the court. In the Eti Salat matter also, we had an intelligence input, yes. which was overlooked by the FIPB. And I want to say to you today that when I say there is a serious national security issue, it is after examining the holding pattern of the Etihad, which includes uh, Pakistanis at, as did okay. uh, the I, I, Eti Salat. Okay, you are going to raise the national security issue and I will come back to that also specifically. But let me just bring in Captain Gopinath who has been waiting. You worked in the aviation sector. Do you believe this is in India's interest or not? Will this, in a sense, open up the aviation sector to more competition, which is what many people believe is the way forward? And the first, uh, whether it's because of uh, the indefatigable Subramani Swami's uh, intervention or the Prime Minister on his own, yes. I think it's good that uh, he's, uh, you know, taking a real look. But having said that, we all know yes. that this airline in question has been, over the years, influencing government policy with successive governments. Yes. When the five-year rule was introduced, when the five-year rule was introduced, not allow other airlines to go abroad, but only Jet Airways. Yes. It helped Jet Airways very clearly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the uh, private equity deal is separate, the bilateral is separate. Yes. But when Etihad uh, put a gun on the head of Jet Airways, Yes. Saying that our investment will come only if there is a bilateral deal. Yes, I think it raises, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, suspicion as Kapil Kohl said and as others said. No, so you I make an, an important point, Captain. One second, one second, yes, one go second. Ahead, go ahead. One second, one yes. second. What, what, the, what, what I'm happy is that what this has brought to the fore and what it has uh, uh, brought to focus is that India does not have a long-term aviation strategic policy. Uh, whether you know we have created monopolies in airports, mm -hmm. uh, whether we have uh, uh, you know in India needs a hub. Yes. What kind of FDI? Yes. What kind of uh, you know we need a long term like a, a country needs an energy policy. We need a long term aviation policy. India t still today yes. doesn't have an aviation policy. Successive aviation ministers appointed committees. Narendra Chandra committee was appointed. Sure. But it never saw the light of day. We have been making rules to suit individual airlines. Okay. And this is one more I, case I take of your point. I making take rules your point. out of Air India or for making I, I take your point. rules for Jet Airways. Rules are subverted so to benefit to look a at, few. Uh, I, we do not have a comprehensive air, aviation policy. Rules are subverted to benefit a few according to you. Sanjay Jha, they, you know, that is the nub of the problem. I think where everyone is coming from in a sense or the critics are coming from is the seeming lack of transparency. That you don't have a clear policy in mind, it becomes ad hoc. 
and then when a bilateral service agreement is sought to be joined to a private equity deal the question is there will be a sense that the government or someone in government has in a sense benefited a particular airline or an individual in a disproportionate manner would you concede you said it's cosmetic when i asked you this earlier but it's more than cosmetic when a bilateral service agreement is signed as a sweetener before a private equity deal there will be serious question marks raised uh, you know you know you know rajdeep uh, while it is very good to hear a diverse opinion i think we are missing the woods for the trees what is the bottom line look at the bottom line the airline penetration in india given the fact that we are now one of the fastest developing economies in the world yes. is still a very very wretched and a low number yes. so we need uh, forget foreign traffic i think we keep talking about foreign traffic but india needs greater domestic business you need viable businesses even today no, no you are not answering my so question years, i'm I mean, sorry sanjay airlines, sanjay i very sanjay few hold are on sanjay no one is denying that the yeah. aviation sector needs to expand needs more competition you are not answering my central question sure. when a bilateral service agreement that provides 300% more seats suddenly to one airline is inked just before a private equity deal is signed between that airline it appears that that airline has been provided a sweetener it appears that there is more to it than meets the eye do you concede that from that point yes. of view it is there will be questions that will be invariably raised Uh, Rajiv, let me make a correction there. The the bilateral deal is not between airlines; it's between governments. Yes, I think Ajit Singh has very that. clearly yes. stated. <laughs> one minute, it's between governments, but it benefits an airline. Thereafter. It benefits an airline. One minute. Let, let, let me answer. Let me answer. Uh, at the end of the day, thereafter, all the domestic airlines, uh, all of them who fly to fly to Abu Dhabi, etc., will have their own share of allocations based on what they foresee yes. as part of their business forecast. Yes. Yes. Which is why the point I'm going to make that you know one of the criticisms against the hub that I don't know whether it's Mr. Swami or the parliamentary panel, they have said that you know end of day Abu Dhabi or Etihad will get access to 23 or yes. uh, X number of airports, yes. while India will have only one airport. Yes. but the truth is that you know if you look at singapore or hong kong yes. uh, many other cities or dubai for that matter yes. these are single city destinations or single city states okay. so you know there are dynamics involved with with you are you are you are you are not, you're not no and i will repeat the key you're point you're not answering my no, central no, question no i'm sorry answer. you're not answering no. the central question has the government got some the manner in which the government went through with this deal will lead to suspicion will lead to question being raised these are not just for once dr swami raising them but various authorities who have raised them at various levels so i don't think that central question is still being answered at the moment at the same time at the same time kapil air india will be the big loser is also a feeling that national interests somehow are to be identified some believe with air india's interests that over the years so many lucrative routes seat sharing bilaterals have been done with the gulf countries in a manner that have worked against the interests of air india should we be joining the interests of air india with national interests or as uh, the minister today told our reporter that air india has to compete in a cutthroat business you know rajdeep i don't think bilaterals can be air india specific it has to be national interest specific because you don't have a policy framework that's why this ad hocism is here to support my point in what the gentleman from congress was saying that today there is a request from singapore airlines for bilaterals yes turkish airlines is asking for maybe um, point 6 points of call more flights so many carriers are request are asking for seats when you single out one carrier yes and do you refuse others you will have to define a logic So you will have to give an answer and this has been going yeah, on for yeah, a long it's time mean, got, i must tell you one thing the cag report of august 2011 which points out how agreements praful patel at the time was the civil aviation minister were heavily tilted in favor of the gulf countries the report said lucrative routes of air india are being given away to other foreign carriers on bilateral agreement so i am presuming that every successive civil aviation minister has used the bilateral service agreement in a to, to favor specific countries possibly in the gulf possibly in other parts of the world. you are saying you need a policy you need a policy framework because these are national assets you must have a method of its allocation why abu dhabi but why not singapore but that doesn't suit our minister no, it but doesn't suit the civil aviation hey, hey, hey minister out, to have a national hey policy out. why abu dhabi why not singapore yes why not turkey why not cathay 
why not why are you not giving more seats to qatar that's number one yes if our policy is to support the valuations of private airlines yes is it only going to be given to jet if go here and asks that i want a similar deal based on that i will get a valuation which will suit me are you going to do that if tomorrow spicejet which is looking at foreign investment if they get a middle east carrier and saying that i also need 20 points of call if you give that then i will invest in that will enhance the valuation where would it end and somebody has to answer uh, that Supramani, why not start? singapore why not you know, turkey Supramani, why not you, 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 want to buy, you know here here we are talking about opening up the economy but this is precisely what I'll has happened with that because this we opening up of the economy up. leads to cronyism we we've seen that in the telecom sector we now we are seeing in the civil aviation in the exactly. absence of clear transparent we need, rules we need to open up and exactly the same syndrome we are seeing here yes in telecom and in coal we did not have a policy we did ad hoc and we see where we have gotten into yes. and call has explained now precisely what is happening in the sector yes. we are putting the cart before the horse yes. we need to open up we need we need fdi yes. are you going to have one more bilateral for each fdi because exactly. without the without the bilateral no so is going to come that is no. because you see the, 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 the policy is a continuum the system so policy is a continuum it okay. has to be followed by every government it is the government you believe it has suited every government it is, it is, every bureaucracy is the government to maintain the discretionary power of deciding with which airline and, to have a bilateral and, and, and with which to not yes it has been highly no there have been no policy at all the policy has been to go purely on ad hoc and because it basis. suits it suits it, the interests it suits, it suits, it the, suits the interests power. of the political establishment exactly. in power exactly and colgate the same principles apply here only two more things yes how is it we can cavalierly yes ignore six ministries eight ministries nine comments yes, yes. and then the public doesn't even know what they are interministerial group let us at least know what the objections are how can we even okay, can that? i can i therefore then turn to the prime minister's note once again yeah. dr swami you must answer this the prime minister's note makes it clear that the private equity deal is between two principles yeah. jet and etihad government has nothing to do yeah. with it then it says that the bilateral su service agreement in this instance is subject to cabinet approval and regulatory approvals yes. are they not sufficient effectively suggesting that there are sufficient checks and balances no. in the system to ensure that the deal no. is not simply a no. sell out as you seem to imply no. let you know i tell you why it's not correct yes. on 28th of february jet airways announced its deal with the etihad yes immediately the amir of uh, abu dhabi yes. said no such deal has been worked out because certain assurances of the government of india yes. have not yet materialized yes then comes this bilateral deal yes and you find that even before any agreement the uh, delegation from the ministry is there to sign and so is mr narish goel in abu dhabi yes. and at that time mr uh, 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 Jit Singh realizes that maybe because of the interministerial group uh, recommendation, the Prime Minister may not agree. He goes to the Prime Minister and says, "I want to overrule the IMG, which for which Mr. P Prime Minister asked Mr. Chidambaram to discuss the matter." You, Mr. Chidambaram goes one he, step he, forward and decides the matter. You are saying a charade was enacted. You are saying a charade was yes. yeah, that, that it had already been decided more or less That's what right. was to be done. And they were all there to but, sign. But you know, and you they went, signed on 24th. Yeah, but you know, you. been making one consistent point about security concerns yes. let's be honest etihad flies across the world yes. it flies into this country right it is not as if etihad doesn't I, fly across the world it flies to 50 countries I across am, the world not, when you raise security concerns you need to prove that those security somebody i else. have so told you that there is a report to which the prime minister himself had asked mr uh, ajit singh to go the prime minister it, certainly doesn't raise it in his note he may not put it in those words but what does he say the role of middle eastern airlines on indian airlines what does that mean then there is a joint intelligence committee report which yes. i have referred to in my latest letter to the prime minister when it came to the question of uh, aircel maxis deal where the fact was hidden that the aircel uh, maxis was owned uh, to, to the extent of 35% by saudi telecom you know, that should have been brought up no no we are coming to, to the effectively countries then which operate out carriers which are operate out of middle east will face the charge every time the dr yes. swami is going to say no, i asked no, him no, this no. question that if tomorrow the same agreement had been struck with singapore airlines would i love, have, I love would the would same, agreement, same, same agreement same agreement with any concerns. country i am against it's any country but so, do you so, believe so, that so, middle so, east countries are so, particularly vulnerable yeah. karna so 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 mr swami in effect we should not fly emirates we should not fly fly dubai the 54000 seat entitlement that emirates Andara. has to india Andara. 
so should never have been done under and a this does not wait, make please. sense because so the kind please, of uh, please. Uh, i'll answer your question yeah. i've understood it let me finish sir right. the kind of benefits that the passengers are getting I, I i i mean a lot of us have flown by emirates the kind of tickets uh, the cheap tickets that we get have certainly benefited the passengers today you can fly to dubai and fly out of dubai for Listen, 30 40 pounds i've heard this argument that, from mr no, raja about the tariffs on the no, mobile it, phones it's, it's not an I, argument. i'm not it's on that reality. it's a reality we the, do the fly question, the you question is all this emirates. is subject to the minimum you, you considerations on emirates, of sir. national security okay so i you, i am i'm only saying this that when it comes to a question of national security there are agencies which have to have the inputs in the fipb they should have called for a security report they did not call for it hold why on. didn't so, they not call no hold on it? so is, is kapil called the real issue now looking at it from a national security perspective because as fdi opens as the aviation sector opens more and more countries and more and more airlines will possibly want to and come in in the near future so is the real answer to this entire issue have a clear transparent policy Absolutely. so that people know exactly on what basis you are giving these various agreed, bilateral agreed. service agreed. agreements that's agreed. where it boils down to then the dr swamis of the world will not be able to post facto there, there are not many issues. there are not many dr swamis of the world okay there, there are I not many dr swamis of the I world you're unique quick, yes quick point yes to just to summarize yes. bilateral is a national asset we must have a policy framework yes. how you distribute it must be done transparently fdi is welcome but it cannot be equitable it has to be equitable and transparent it cannot be game changing for one and not for the rest of the industry more important and this yes. is a very important point we live in a very open and transparent world not it is not hidden what happened at the bilateral meeting at abu dhabi when indian contingent yes. went there every airline was in that meeting it is not hidden that what happened with the secretary civil aviation meeting where every airline was there what happened it is known that what abu dhabi mentioned in that meeting to indian counterparts every airline is aware of it okay. right. so my worry is the method Without of distribution how you how you are allocating a, a national asset okay. otherwise when fdi came i strongly uh, we strongly welcomed it it was a game okay. changer but, 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 but you but need but to be game changing for the be. sector okay, not so, for so one so final word so, uh, can can final word just want to put it how can it be equitable when air india does not have the aircraft to deploy if you want to be equitable air india must also be made as strong as a etihad or a qatar or any other global That's airline exactly. so how how, how can you, you do that you can't do that, that, that so it's not strong it can be made strong overnight i i i have run out of time i appreciate your joining us there are several issues air india is another issue to be discussed on another another day the state of air india but for now our focus has been on jet etihad captain gopinath sorry we couldn't come more often to you but i appreciate your joining us along with uh, uh, sanjay jai you want to give a final word captain gopinath to that big question is it in the national interest or not yes or no jet etihad will you support it or not no uh, no, no i don't support it uh, purely from the point uh, of the other 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 commentators they made yes. the point i'm making is that you know every country uh, these days you know aviation is a cornerstone of their economic policy right uh, and in india unfortunately it is not central to our economic planning we look at dubai or even singapore right. or even other countries even america so we don't have a comprehensive long term strategic transportation aviation policy i once once that is done i think these kind of things will not happen okay well uh, you know that that is as as tsr subramaniam put it well that in india we often put the cart before the horse this is a classic example we are having a debate more than 2 months after the deal has been actually inked and an mou has been signed and there will be repercussions of that on the uh, on fdi if investors now start believing that the government of the day says one thing in the month of april and says something else in the month of july but i appreciate all my panelists joining us on our talking point tonight editors take where do we stand the jet etihad deal threatens to follow an all too familiar narrative that has hobbled the upa2 government when it comes to big ticket deals the charge of corruption whether based on fact or perception is enough to push the government into a tailspin part of the problem is the opacity of decision making that provides ample scope for suspicion since this deal involves an ajit singh a coalition partner with a rather checkered past the charge might even stick a stronger more decisive political leadership would have stood up and explained its position with firmness and transparency instead by taking refuge in bureaucratic speak it leaves more questions than answers does the upa government believe the jet etihad deal and the bilateral air services agreement is in the national interest or not by dithering it only sends negative signals that maybe it has something to hide
of uh, talking about his U-turn and all that. I certainly think that he has done what he could do within the, within the, uh, uh, the constraints that have been placed on him. I only say this. Today we have a parliamentary committee which says it's not in the national interest. We have the uh, operators in this uh, yes. in a, uh, uh, who are looking after passenger interests. They are saying it's not in the interest. Air India says it's not in our interest. Such a large spectrum of people are saying that it is not in our interest. Then the Prime Minister draws the attention of Mr. Ajit Singh to a intelligence uh, prepared joint intelligence committee prepared report on the impact of Middle Eastern airlines on Indian airlines and national security. Now, national security issues are not raised by me alone. It's been raised on a document which has been brought to the attention of uh, Mr. Ajit Singh. Mr. Right. Ajit Singh is asked to convene, a, a prepare a cabinet note so the cabinet meeting can be called. He is given a reminder and still the cabinet meeting has not taken place. So, you are you're effectively saying that there was an attempt by ministers in this government to push through this deal in haste. That's your charge. That I, despite, I, I will, despite the Prime Minister... I will say that Mr. Ajit Singh had a joint secretary on 22nd in Abu Dhabi waiting to sign the the the, the nigger in the wood pile was the uh, interministerial group which opposed this deal and that's where the problem arose and that's why he went to the prime minister but let, no, but let me let me also tell you let me quote from your own letter you say my usually reliable sources usually reliable sources tell me that is if this deal is finally cleared and implemented it would destroy the indian airline industry especially air india and empower a foreign airline and a nation known for money laundering will become a hub for india's passenger traffic that's right now, Surely all these issues, as the Prime Minister's letter says, are being debated in a regulator. Well, there's no are, question of debating. They, 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 are in a, they are before the FIPB. Some of these issues are FIPB before SEBI. You are, you are prejudging the entire issue. FIPB cleared Air, Air Asia because there was no opposition at that time. Because of my letter, the FIPB could not clear it. No, That's I, why it got no, delayed. It seems to be suggesting as if Subramaniam Swami is, is the only one in this country that the regulators don't matter. Only you know what is right for India and what is not right for India. Well, I can you, always say what is right when I have proved it by going to court on the 2G spectrum matter and so many other matters. I can tell you today this deal is much worse than any other deal we have signed so far. Okay. You know, we will come to the specifics in a moment, but Sanjay Jha, respond to what you are hearing from uh, uh, Dr. Swami, because the Prime Minister responds today in his letter by saying the allegations are factually incorrect and baseless. But he hasn't answered really some of the core issues that the deal is fraught with national security concerns that by providing a vastly enhanced seat capacity to ethics. Is the big question that I'm raising. Is the Jet Etihad deal then in the national interest or is it not in the national interest? That's the big question that we're raising tonight. Joining me now on my panel. And we'll raise all the big questions in a moment as to why this deal is being seen by some against the national interest, but by many that it is for the national interest. Subramaniam Swami of the Janta Party is the man who raised this uh, initial objection against this deal. TSR Subramaniam, former cabinet secretary, is with us. Kapil Kaul, CEO of South Asia of Kappa, who looks closely at the aviation sector. Karma Paljor, who tracks it closely, is also with us. Captain Gopinath, former MD, Air Deccan and entrepreneur, is with us. And Sanjay Jha, spokesperson of the Congress, is also joining us. Appreciate all of you joining us. But I'm going to, as I place all those big questions, and they'll come on your screen one by one, on, your, uh, on the lower side of your screen. Dr. Subramaniam Swami, Today, the Prime Minister in his letter has made it very clear that this deal has not even been cleared. It's still going through the regulatory process. Yet, you went and jumped the gun. On May 29th, you made an accusation against the government that there were national security concerns being violated, that there was an alleged whiff of corruption, and you have gone for the government. Now, even before the deal is finally goes through the regulatory mechanism, you have raised the bogey of corruption. Are yes. you, in a sense, targeting, some would say, dare I say, blackmailing this government? <laughs> well, you are intimidating the government. Well, it is the duty of the opposition to bring these things to public record. Had I not written that letter, the, uh, on June 11th, yes. the FIBPB would have cleared the uh, project. The Prime Minister says that he has been raising this issue on the 22nd of, uh, from the 22nd we, we, of April. We, we, he did we, not even go to Abu we, Dhabi we, for a bilateral visit. Yes, of course you are not. I have never held the Prime Minister responsible. It is you in the media.